Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Don't let her fool you. Sarya knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Oh. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayuri. Hee hee hee. Yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sari in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Eh? A hey, hey cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sari glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution? Actually, that one almost worked. Ha 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 ha. Oh, I had a feeling it was going to be Natsuki. I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. Hmm. That hair in the face. Must be a giant cookie. I want a cookie. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. Ah ha ha. The Natsuki. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sorry hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sorry rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes the big bite. So good. Mm. Sari suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Hee hee hee. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes the bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. So I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Hee hee hee. Sari gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and then wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sari off of her. Um. Sari suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you see us just do that? Hoo 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 hoo. Mouthful, Sari trots away to safety. Her and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Hmm. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Ah ha ha, I wouldn't be surprised. Huh. Maybe she does. Dang it. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Hee <laughs> hee, that's true. Excuse me. Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. A boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Ah ha ha. That makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? Oh. Ooh. Such a talent. I wasn't aware you played music at all, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. Yes. Yes, play, um... Play, um... What's that? What's that? Canon in D. Or, or, uh... Or for our lease, everyone know those songs. That's Anka looks at me. <gasps> or if anyone knows that this song or River. Ooh. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Cap Gooey. Anka smiles sweetly and. Kicks everyone else out with their butt. Ah. 
I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. But I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... Not really. I choose to leave out Sayuri's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayuri will somehow already finish her entire cookie. Yuri is back at her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Huh. Kabgui, Kabgui! Sayuri suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Want to come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival's coming up. Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Glue sticks? Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Ah, are you going with Cap Green to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Aw, oh, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. Hee hee, okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay. Ready, Cap Gooey? Yep, let's go. I saw that. I saw that Monica wanted to go with me. Sayuri and I exit the club room. I follow behind us. Sayuri hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayuri finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. Hee hee hee. Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. That's so. Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone's gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds kind of dull. Yeah, Gooey, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like, you say the lines of the poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower be big beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous, prosperous field before me, is but a barren wasteland. Like that. Sayori, where do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh, uh, you meanie. Oh. Working super hard on this, you know. Uh, I know, I know. I just meant that it's a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. Haha, uh -huh, don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I'm so excited. The festival is going to be so much fun. Sari spins herself around the hallway again. Hey, Kevin, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sari like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sari brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. Huh. The two of us enter the classroom. Sari heads straight to the closet and I follow. Where? Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sari pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. They're kind of dirty though. Sari starts pulling various crayons out of the box reading their color names. Alright, let's. that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Uh, I dropped one by accident. Yeah. Sari bends over and smacks her forehead like right into the show. Falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow. You okay? My forehead. Sari clutches her forehead. Peace, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. And Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. 
Aww. Super kawaii. Hi, Johnny Brusher Banks to the side. Ow. Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. How would you find you some ice? Have gooey. Where would I even find ice around this time? I don't know, the ice machine. I don't know. Uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, Tyree makes a little silly joke. Aha, uh -huh, what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Uh, I, thought was, I thought it would be a big box of crayons. Like, like 64 or something. Okay. Huh. Well, it seems like we're going to go find our code drink. Do that in the next episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you everybody for watching this episode and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye!